Abdul Karim, let's talk talk about your uh, story. You no, know, yours is, is 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 different in that you had left the church for some time. You found the church so dissatisfying that you couldn't remain. You left without even knowing where you were going. Like Abraham, you left without having firm answers. But it was clear to you that the answers were not coming from the church. You just couldn't stay any longer. Let's talk about your church experience first and just, you know, what led you out of the church in the first place. Like, uh, Abdul Karim. Like most, uh, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Like most Jamaican child who has a good upbringing, <laughs> come from a poor background, yeah. but yeah. something True. that you got from your parents really is how to discipline. Yeah. And like most Jamaican boys and girls, <coughs> You go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. You come see your grandfather, go to church, your grandmother, your mother, your father, and so you come to church too. But with me, after I got baptized, I began to read the Bible cravingly, mm -hmm. not pouring over it. Mm -hmm. Because I love the Bible. I see. So the more I read the Bible, I begin to discover questions mm -hmm. that pose themselves threatening hmm. and threatening in the sense that on the right which is the old testament on the left is the new testament and when i read something of the old testament it's as if something changed in the new testament mm -hmm. and they would link these things to god mm -hmm. By saying God said this mm, and God said that. Mm -hmm. But eventually he's saying, but how God said this here? And then when you come over here, God said that. God not supposed to change his mind. <laughs> God is supposed to know exactly what is going to happen mm -hmm. from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. So with these questions in mind, you begin to ask, because you want to clear your, the hair yes, yes. in your mind you begin to ask maybe a sister or an older brother in mm -hmm, the church too. and sometimes you don't get the kind of answer you once you go to your pastor mm -hmm. and they would feel that what you're doing is railing against the bible question god because the bible is not supposed to be questioned true. and so the first thing they would tell you it seems that you're going astray true Max, you're losing your faith yeah mm -hmm. but something happened once and there was this minister from the Turks and Caicos Island who was visiting Jamaica mm -hmm. and he was filling churches in the communities. Mm -hmm. And one Monday night, he came to preach at the church that I attended. And he said in his preaching that any minister preached the book of Ephesians to his church, that minister is a mad minister and should go to the asylum. Because the book yes. of Ephesians yeah. is a book of love, and you cannot preach a book of love to a carnal church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the church is filled with carnality, oh. therefore you cannot. So as an 11 year old, 12 year old, 12 year old boy, I went home to see my dad. Yeah. And when I got home that night, I woke my dad up. Yes, and I yes. said, this is what I heard. <laughs> and dad said, he's wrong. <laughs> so I continued reading the Bible. I came upon things. First question I asked my minister, and in a very serious way, I said, in the book of Genesis, it is said that God said, my spirit does not always dwell strive, with man. Strive with man. Strive with man. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will not allow him to live more than 120 years. Mm -hmm. And then when I read further in the Bible, it said God changed his mind at a point here and said, my liberal 900. Ma no, no, this was after the Methuselah, mm, mm, coming down mm, from Methuselah, mm, mm, 365, um, 120. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. And then later on he mm -hmm. said, I will not allow man to live more than three yes, score years, evil, yeah. mm -hmm. but by reason of strength, yes, yes, yes. three score years and ten. Yes, yes. This is a deviation. Mm. Does God speak like this? Is the Bible the word of God? Oh, or oh. somebody's idea, oh, oh. acting on their own idea, to brainwash somebody and so well, the I begin to fall out of grace oh. with the church yeah. the pastor no reminded that the secret thing is belonging unto the Lord and those that are revealed but what I kept going at him with is he said the things of God are mystery that's right 
to the natural man. Yes. yes. What I keep on saying to him, <laughs> you said, and the Bible said, that when Jesus left to heaven, he said, I will send the Holy Spirit, and he will teach you all things. Yes. So therefore, there should be no mystery. <laughs> yes. So yes. I leave the church. So you left because of that? Yes. I could not get answers. And the Bible was becoming more confusing and oh. more contradicting. So you were baptized and all that? Baptized. Very it wasn't active. because you start person. wasn't because you start full of woman at church and certainly not. Fornication, your world your worldly, worldly life start certainly get to you. Not. You, you use that as excuse. No, no. I it was, was no woman problem. Certainly not. I was young when I leave the church. Yeah, I know, but young when I start I early. Know. That is a fact. It's not that you don't have your eye looking on a girl, Yes, I know. But it's not. But these were priority. real. These were these were serious intellectual challenges. Serious intellectual challenges. And when you and you asked, couldn't have answers from the church. No, they didn't want to answer. So and more left. and more I read the Bible. The more confusing the answer. Yeah. The more confusing it gets. Okay. The Bible itself was was the source of the confusion. The confusion. source of the confusion. And I feel to myself that I was wrong. So when I go to the people who are supposed to know, to know the Bible, you thought it, it would be clarified. But because you they didn't want me to know mm -hmm. that they don't know either. Or uh, this is a way of getting around making their lives more important. So mm -hmm. no clarification here. So when you left the church, it must have been a confusing period because you moved from a position of certainty when you were very young to know where you, you, you really don't know what God is saying what his religion is or how was that period for certainly. you certainly very very agonizing agonizing right word because I long dark night of the soul I knew deep inside that the pit that God exists. of my conviction yeah. that God exists, there is a God. There must be a God. You, see, you knew that. I knew that. You know, we doubt about that. And I will tell you this too. I will go forward and tell you this. That when I pray in my sincerity, I said my sincerity yeah. at that time, I, I always tell God, I knew something is wrong here, but I will not give my prayer to another God. And I will not believe in anything except you. Okay. So my conviction is there is a God, but how do I worship him properly? Yes, you don't I just know. don't know, don't but know. I could not go to the church to worship him there because something is wrong here. I see. And this Bible could not lead me to God because it could not be the word of God. It's too conflicting. You came to that conclusion. I came to that conclusion. And although I read it, I read it not for the sake of condemning it. No, I know, man. But to see if it, it has an answer somewhere I understand that would have cleared up my confusion. But it, but it never did. It never did. And when I speak to people who are supposed to be learned, it's true. especially people who visit my home, I gladly accepted them because I said, baby, these people have the answer. So when Joe's witness come by, you, want, you talk to them. But when them I spoke the to them, <laughs> they, I, they, they tell me, oh, they, they, uh, well, yes, this is that and their Bible is different your from Bible, New World Translation are different from yes okay. and I remember <clears throat> one weekend I was at home three Jehovah Witnesses came to see me and I started to ask them questions yeah questions in my mind I wanted answer for and I remember they said to me okay we can't answer these questions but, but we're the going elder, to the elder yes the elder came the following week and I posed the same questions and he told the other three that came pre previously, pack up your books, put them in your bag, let's get out of here. This man know the Bible, but in practice it, he read the Bible to criticize it. <laughs> I said, no, I don't read the Bible That's to true. criticize it. You want answers? I want answers. That's how a lot of Christians are, man. I want answers. Yeah, they don't have the answers. Okay. So, every time... I speak to someone who I believe is trying help. for the answers, trying for the trying answers. Trying for the answers. Can't I get the answers? Because I knew I was not going in the right direction. You knew that. I know that. After how many years you came in contact with Islam? Three Just years. Speak. Three years. You mean after confusion? Yeah, man, after confusion. Both 35 years. You're kidding. Yes, both 35 years. 35 years both out in the church? 35 wilderness? years I was in that wilderness. That is amazing. Of ignorance. But you're still, your heart was still yearning for God. You never lost that zeal for God and the search for him. You see, the first thing that was ringing in my head regularly was my mother oh. and my father. 
they used to sing every single morning in their bedroom, yes. joining mine. Yes. And they used to pray. Uh -huh. And I knew that although they were Christians, they do not know about Islam. Yes. They believe in God. Mm -hmm. And they teach me about God. And I knew that God is a reality. Mm -hmm. But the worship of God is much <clears throat> more in my but opinion you were 35 years in the wilderness 35 years until the light of islam came interesting conversion stories conversion from christianity to islam we pick up the stories when we come back from our break this is religious hard talk how oh, you find you you've, you've came upon islam now it's 35 years of searching and when you when you heard the message it, it immediately strike you as true tell, tell me how you, you responded and what attracted you? Uh, a few minutes we have. So a you friend of mine it. one day asked me to accompany him to the masjid, the central masjid on camp. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was going to see the sheikh for some reason. He wasn't a Muslim, uh -huh. but for some reason he had to, to speak with the sheikh. So I accompanied him and I waited for him in the yard while he went to see the sheikh in the sheikh's office. Mm -hmm. And my brother came out and I asked him, I said, could I get a, 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 a Quran? Mm -hmm. And he said, um, yes. So he went and he got me a Quran. And when I went home, I was told previously by a friend of mine who had one, that um, when you, he understood that when you read in this book, you're supposed to wash your hands. Mm. So I said, okay. I didn't do it out of curiosity. I still do it out of respect. Okay. And um, I washed my hands and I went to bed and I started reading the book and I couldn't put it down. You find it that interesting? No, I couldn't put it down because the first thing, it was different. Different from the Bible? Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And it went on, which is the opening, which translated in English said, In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Now, my heart was beginning to rest in peace because the most beneficent, the most merciful. But we learn about Jesus too, so I mean, I know you're coming. Yes, That's something no, new. no, but this is different. Well, no Praise be to Allah, Lord of the world. Mm -hmm. It continues, owner of the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. Thee alone we worship, thee alone we ask for help. No, no Trinity and, and yeah. No. Jesus has no God and all them thing there. So I read all right. the, f the opening, which is the first surah, which is called the opening. Mm -hmm. And then I moved on. And then I decided the second surah is very long. Right. So I couldn't put it down. So what impressed you most? What impressed me most? Move. There was no jargonism. Okay. No confusion. No, no contradiction. You no be, contradiction here. Plain there was words. nothing for me to question. Nothing for you to Everything was plain mm -hmm. and clear. And you find Islam a clarity that you never found in Christianity. Never before. Never found in the Bible. Never before. You have a satisfaction after many years of searching. You finally have found a satisfaction. Abdul Karim. I'll give you an example. Exodus 24 tell me that a group of 24 people saw God. Mm -hmm. Another part about it, say no man has seen God at any no time. No man had seen God at any time and them. lived. Yeah. Contradiction. 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 Uh -huh. And then one of the things that really put my head in the cooking pot is the so-called greatest apostle Paul. Yeah, <laughs> won't it? I find him very strange. <laughs> a con man. Uh, a con man. A yes, a he called himself a thief when I check it out <laughs> yeah. at one point. And I said, but what kind of Bible is this that called itself the word of God? Of the man as heroes. Where are the man as heroes? Because Paul himself is saying that the foolishness of God mm. is wiser, than, is wiser the, than the wisest man. Yeah. And the weakness of God yes. is stronger that than is. the strongest yeah, man. Yeah. No. Yeah, I refer to that's God blasphemy. Has weak, God has no weaknesses. Weakness. <laughs> And you know, accept it as no metaphorical language. Certainly right? not. And if this is the word of God, it could not be contained in this context. All right. And you believe that the Bible is laden with contradictions. It is mm. not the word of God. The it's Bible is not the word of God. Segment of men's imagination. The Bible is not the word of God. No, a set, a set of men get together. It's like a butcher killing a cow. Mm -hmm. 
And so they cut it up in different parts. You have different cuts. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible is like that. <laughs> One, I can prove here <laughs> that the Bible is not the word of God. And to every Christian listening to my voice. Give us some examples. I won't contest it. I won't Let debate Let me it. just read an introduction and then I will go on. Yeah, introduction won't be long though. No, right, not at all. Mm -hmm. This introduction is from Graham Scroggie mm -hmm. of the Moody Bible Institute, Chicago, mm -hmm. no in his book titled, It is Human Yet Divine. Mm -hmm. He said, quoting, and let us be perfectly fair as we pursue the subject. Is the Bible the word of God? Bearing in mind that we are to hear what the Bible has to say about itself. In a court of law, we assume that a witness will speak the truth and must accept what he says unless we have good grounds for suspecting him or can prove him a liar. Surely the Bible should be given the same opportunity to be heard and should, re and should receive a like penitent hearing mm -hmm. that's pleading for the bible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i will prove to you that the bible is on the witness stand mm -hmm. and the christians of this country is the judge and the jury if they do not give the bible a fair trial then injustice is what they live mm -hmm. i will quote something before i go to that okay Holy Quran 4, verse 82. Do they not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from any other than Allah, they would have found therein many discrepancies. Are you saying people have not found discrepancies in the Quran? They can't find any discrepancies yes. in here. I remember when you have that Reverend Gold here, mm -hmm. Richie, Gold, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. his assault was not on Islam. His assault was on the Prophet, peace be upon him. He never pointed out at any given time, contradiction anywhere, yeah. a contradiction. Others have, others have done that where other Christian scholars and even others who are not uh, Christians have pointed to alleged discrepancies in the Quran but I allow you I will move on yes to a few things mm -hmm. contradictions contradictions mm -hmm. in the way I start with 2nd Samuel 24 1 mm -hmm. and I quote and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he moved David against them to say go number Israel and Judah compare with first chronicle 21 and satan stood up against israel and provoked david to number israel who did the provocation and who was anger yeah. it's the same story a, a common objection second chronicles 36 9 jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Compare Second Kings 24, verse 8. It said that Joachim was 18 years old, 8 or 18 One. years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which of these mm -hmm. stories is true? Mm -hmm. I'll move on to Second Samuel 24, 13. God came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land, or will thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Compare Second Chronicle twenty one eleven. So God came to David, thus said the Lord, chose thee either three years famine or three months. To be destroyed before thy fall. Seven years or three years. <laughs> Which of these stories is true? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel ten eighteen. 
And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen. Compare 2 Chronicles 19, 18. But the Syrians fled before Israel and David slew the Syrians 7,000 men which fought in chariots and 40,000 footmen not 40,000 horsemen which of these two stories are correct mm -hmm. first king 7 26 and it was a hand breadth thick and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies it contained 2,000 baths compare with first second chronicle 4 5 similar description but 3,000 baths was it 2,000 baths or 3,000 baths